<laughs> Hi, I'm Sue Davies. I'm the author of Stranger Things. Look, it's on the line. Um, that's this book right here. <laughs> um, I'm excited. Excited to be here. It's my first Comic Con. Um, and so, yeah, and I'm also just excited to have played in the Stranger Things world and to also bring this particular character to life who has been like one of my favorite characters, but also like one, one of those who has like really re needed a book to like dig in <laughs> into his own story. So uh, I feel honored in a way to be the one who gets to do it. Yeah. So tell us about the genesis of this and how you got involved with the project. Um, this is a funny story <laughs> because um, so my first book with um, Penguin Random House uh, was also a tie-in with the Minecraft property. Uh, it's called the Haven Trials. So that team I worked with was like, you know, we enjoyed the experience <laughs> so much uh, that when the um, other team was like looking for someone to work on this, when the, um, Netflix and Random House teams were searching for someone, they said, hey, we work with this guy <laughs> over, over, over on the other side of the building in Minecraft. And so they reached out to my agent and said, will you know, so be interested in, you know, working on this? And when my agent told me, I was like, interested? <laughs> like, that's not a question. Like, this is exactly, you know, what I have asked for. And then to get to be the person to do it, to like fan fiction my way into canon. Like, what? Sign me up. <laughs> like, don't even ask any questions, you know, so. So yeah, that's how I ended up there. So at what point in the series did the, the work on this project begin? So um, this pretty much this book is pretty much a bridge between the end of season three and the beginning of season four. So it contains some parts of season four up until a certain episode that I'm not gonna say. <laughs> but um, it, but it pretty much kicks off after the events of season three, the destruction of Starcord and everything. And what's happening is you know folks are sort of setting into this new equilibrium as much as you know as much as they can, right? Because everything's sort of broken, Hopper is missing, so like no one knows what's going on and this these kids have to start high school. So it's kind of a strange place to be. It's like the quiet after the storm. Um, and then Lucas in particular is, look, is also looking for this opportunity to sort of like reinvent himself. He's like, all right, no more fighting uh, uh, monsters, right? No more fighting international spies or whatever. I want to be a normal kid again. I want to be a normal kid. Uh, I'm going to start, start high school, try something new. Um, and so this book sort of starts that journey, but also how it affects his relationship with, you know, the party, with the, with the um, town of Hawkins, with, you know, himself, right? You know, especially being one of the few black kids in Hawkins, but also the only black kid in the party. So all of these differing things, right, um, sort of pick, start that journey, right, towards where he ends up at the beginning of season four where he's like part of the basketball scene and everything so so this book sort of fills that space and tells you why and how he got there and why he made those decisions so is it recommended that people read this book in between the two seasons or like concurrently with season four honestly i think it will best serve those who already have questions even those who have seen season four who okay, are like the end of season yeah four. even those who have seen it up to that point who who think why did Lucas make those decisions, especially in the beginning? Okay. And then they can read this book and they'll see why. Or those who are asking why did Lucas and Max break up, then they, they can find out because that's answered in the book. <laughs> um, uh, but also, like, why does he become the person he is at the beginning of season four? Um, for those who haven't seen season four, they can literally pick this book right after whatever they started. It will help if they've seen season three. Um, and then they can just pick up from there. Uh, there will be no spoilers for the most part, um, except where the season four events begin in the book. But even then, um, I mean, this this isn't this this is a so this also lends a certain interiority to the character that you wouldn't see on the screen in season four. So even if you read it, you would get a different experience, right? Even if the events would be the same, the experience of that of those events would be different. How much guidance did you get from the writers and producers of the show? Did they tell you your story or your time frame at least? How, how did that collaboration work? I would say it was a lot of collaboration. <laughs> um, so they, they, the, the team 
I would say there were three teams, right? There was a team at Penguin, at Random House. Um, then there was a team um, at Netflix, I believe, who were like working um, specifically on the property. Like, or, or just Netflix IP team, I'm not sure which. But then there was a team of the writers from the show. And so like all these three, I, I, was, I was getting notes from all these three sources, right? And every time I would write something, they would, they would like vet it, right? They would read through it, they would be like, no, this can't work. Um, some, some of them like had their roles just to tell me what music or mo what, what, what song or like, uh, movie or stuff that had been like that movie wasn't out of VHS like 1985 so like they would strike it down and like find some other movie or something um, while some others were like trying to keep me in like canon to um, some were you know throwing ideas right mostly like what are you you know how do we get how do we deal with like the virus is moving and how does that factor into the book because they moved at the end of season three who's gonna be there uh, new characters how do we get them to the end of the story but they don't show up in season four right so stuff like that there were all these decisions we made them together it was a very very collaborative process with a lot of throwing spaghetti to the wall seeing what sticks sometimes writing something and like how you know three quarters of it been struck off and that you know i'd be asked to write it again um it was fun it was it, i i keep saying i remember the meetings more than i remember the writing <laughs> but i liked the meetings because they were like it, it felt like a writer's room in a way so it was a very enjoyable and very collaborative process yeah. um and what else are you working on right now um, currently, no further time work, um, but um, my own original novels. Um, I'm writing an epic fantasy trilogy called The Nameless Republic. Uh, the first was came out in 2021, um, last year. It's called Son of the Storm. Uh, and the next book in the series, the second book, is going to be out next year. It's called Warrior of the Wind. Um, both books are from Orbit, so um, if you you know look out, watch out for that. Uh, if you want to start, now is a good time to start Son of the Storm and uh, prior to when War of the Wind is released. Yeah. Great. And where can we find you online? Um, SuiDavies.com is a very good way. I'm on Twitter and Instagram at SuiDavies. Uh, but I think where I usually engage the most is my newsletter, which is SuiAfterFive.com. Um, and yeah, you can catch me pretty much in any of these places.